Oh man, this is something I thought that I would never end up talking about, but here we are guys. NFTs have made their way onto the Monero blockchain and a lot of people are pissed about it because spoiler alert, these things here could really hurt the anonymity of this blockchain. Now, before I can really talk about these Monero NFTs, I first got to talk about some developments in the more general crypto space, specifically developments with Bitcoin and Litecoin that have taken place over the past three months or so. The price of those coins has been on the rise the past three months, and there's a bunch of reasons why they've been going up, but I think the biggest reason is the development of ordinals because this stuff is giving me some serious deja vu to Ethereum a few years ago when NFTs became popular and Ethereum's price was going up. So on the surface, ordinals are the same as NFTs. They allow you to have this decentralized proof of ownership of some arbitrary piece of data usually digital artwork, just like we saw with NFTs, and some of the more popular digital artwork is also very similar to the CryptoPunks that we saw that were so popular on the Ethereum blockchain. But there's one important difference between ordinals and NFTs that actually makes the ordinals a bit more based. And that's the fact that the inscription, the data that makes up the actual image is stored on the blockchain rather than just a link to a JPEG file that's in Google Drive or IPFS or something like that being stored in the blockchain like we see with classic NFTs. So basically ordinals are what NFTs wish they were or they're what a lot of people think NFTs are. Digital artwork that is fully on the blockchain. And in the world of Bitcoin and Litecoin, these things do seem to be very popular. Of course, there are detractors and there are reasons to be against ordinals, which I'm going to discuss more when we get to how they affect Monero. But ordinals have definitely been good for the price, which is what I think Bitcoin and Litecoin maxis care about the most. They've also been good for the miners because ordinals when used on any blockchain, they increase the block size. There's more data that's being stored in each transaction, so that increases the block size, and that increases the demand for block space, which has a direct correlation with transaction fees. It's just like when Ethereum gas fees were really high during the NFT craze, the increased transaction fees could make it more profitable to mine Bitcoin. There has been about $1.35 million in on-chain transaction fees, this isn't even counting off-chain transactions, which is beyond the scope of this video, but 1.35 million in on-chain transaction fees within the Bitcoin network just, from, just since this last February. Higher transaction fees ultimately mean more money in the pockets of the miners, and I actually do think that NFTs, ordinals, or any other kind of way to inscribe some symbolic meaning onto these cryptographic transactions in the blockchain, I do think that this is a good way to create excitement amongst normie investors in cryptocurrency just in general and get them putting their money into it because most people out there are just not gonna invest in crypto because they read the white paper. Okay, let's be real. How many people holding even tens of thousands of dollars worth of Bitcoin, Litecoin, or any coin have actually read the white paper? Not many people. Or there's not that many people that are buying into crypto because they want to support crypto anarchism with their own money, okay? Most people don't know and they don't care about those things, but a cute digital animal that they can own like some kind of crappier form of Tamagotchi, <laughs> for some reason that gets people excited and it gets the money flowing into crypto. NFTs, they probably pumped more normie money into Ethereum than anything else, which 
was ultimately a huge win for the early adopters who sold their bags during Ethereum's peak. But of course, there's problems with ordinals as well. And I'm gonna talk more about how they affect Monero since that's the crypto that I'm most concerned about and that's the one that I've done the most research into. Now, one thing that's important to point out is Monero technically doesn't have ordinals in the same way that Bitcoin does, but it does have this protocol called TX Extra or this function in the protocol called TX Extra which allows you to add arbitrary data to a Monero transaction and store that arbitrary data with the transaction on the blockchain. So the end result is something very similar to what we see with ordinals. And even though TX Extra has been a part of the Monero protocol for a very long time, I guess people didn't really start using it to create digital art or to put digital art onto the Monero blockchain until people first started doing this with ordinals because at the high level they function so similarly. Now the downside to using ordinals or to putting extra information in the TX extra field is that doing this makes the transaction take up more space on the blockchain. This is true for Bitcoin, Litecoin, Monero, all these different cryptos. And at the end of the day, the blockchain is a ledger. It's a history of the transactions that take up space on the hard drives of people that are running nodes, for sure. Uh, people that are mining the currency, I think you typically have to download all or some of the blockchain in order to do that. Uh, and it can also affect people who just want to use the wallet for transactions. Now you don't necessarily need to download the blockchain in order to just make transactions with a cryptocurrency, but this is especially true, like actually downloading it to use the crypto is especially true with Monero because it's a privacy coin. And so we're going to recommend people download the Monero blockchain onto their computers so that they can run their own nodes since that's the most private way to use any cryptocurrency. And right now, the Monero blockchain is about 140 gigabytes in size and the Bitcoin blockchain is over 400 gigabytes in size. So these currencies are already at a point, especially with Bitcoin, where it's very demanding to run a full node at home to actually store all of that on a hard drive or SSD or whatever. And this is probably going to create a lot more problems in the future for Bitcoin, unless some major breakthroughs happen with storage technology to make it much denser and cheaper. If we take a look at this Bitcoin blockchain size here, we can actually see the direct effect that ordinals have been having. So you can see that around the beginning of February, this is basically when ordinals on Bitcoin started becoming really popular. Boom, the rate of expansion for the blockchain increased. And even if we zoom out, uh, let's just do max. Let's see, how far does this go? Okay, this only goes to like 2018, but still that's, that's about five years, all right? This release of ordinals back in February, just a month ago, that has been the single biggest thing to cause an increase in the rate of expansion for Bitcoin's blockchain size. So this is having a pretty huge effect on Bitcoin. And again, like I said, unless some something happens with storage that makes it a whole lot cheaper for people to buy, a whole lot cheaper for people to rent if they're gonna run VPSs, this is not going to be a sustainable growth for Bitcoin's blockchain. Now, Bitcoin has a fixed block size but Monero's block size is dynamic. It's determined by the size of the last 100 blocks. So if ordinals started becoming common on Monero's blockchain, kind of like what we're seeing with Bitcoin's blockchain where most of the transactions happening right now are ordinals, then we're also going to see an inflation of the block sizes themselves, which compounds the inflation of the blockchain's total size, which like I said, inflation of the blockchain size is a bigger problem for Monero users since they're more likely to run their own private nodes. 
Now, there's another issue with the Monero ordinals, which is actually the biggest problem in my opinion. They hurt the anonymity of the network. And it's not just that they hurt the people that are minting the ordinals or the people that are buying the ordinals, but they hurt anyone that's transacting on Monero. Because at a fundamental level, what's happening is we're inscribing additional meaning onto blockchain transactions. We're basically labeling and numbering these transactions, which is something that we don't want in Monero. We want all transactions to look as similar to one another as possible. This is where the fungibility comes from. It comes from the fact that there's no way to really label or trace tokens on the Monero network. They're all the same. Unlike Bitcoin, where we can have tokens that are tracked back to illegal activity, which makes those tokens tainted. Monero uses ring signatures to obscure the inputs of a transaction. Instead of Monero transactions being signed by one person's keys, they're signed with the outputs from past transactions to obscure the identity of the person who's really sending the Monero. Right now, the ring size is 16. So whenever you transact with Monero, there's 15 decoy signatures that are added to your transaction. But if all 15 of those outputs are NFTs, or if any of them are NFTs really, then that's gonna hurt your anonymity set because those NFT outputs can be disregarded by anyone that's analyzing the blockchain to de-anonymize people. They automatically know that the NFTs are not the real transaction. And the way that these things stand right now, Monero ordinals can be created pretty inexpensively. So if this labeling of the outputs on the Monero blockchain were to be used by, say, a three-letter government agency to try and reduce the effectiveness of the decoy signatures, then that would be a serious issue for people that need that anonymity. Now, the issues with TX Extra have been known about for some time now, and there are some arguments for keeping it. Basically, TX Extra makes Monero more programmable, but that scenario that I just laid out of a government using ordinals to reduce everyone's anonymity set in Monero is not that far-fetched. The IRS famously offered up a bounty of $625,000 to anyone who could trace Monero just two and a half years ago. So yeah, because of that, there's a lot of talk about either removing TX Extra from the spec altogether or to take some actions to make people less likely to abuse it. Basically, you could reduce the size of TX Extra, so there's less data that you're able to put in there from the beginning, and you can make its fields encrypted by default, so people would be less likely to put apes and silly things like that on the chain. And you could also make it more expensive to even use that field or put any data in that field uh, to further de-incentivize anyone, malicious or not, from using the Monero network to mint NFTs. But the thing is, there's really no way to permanently solve this problem. There's no way to permanently stop someone from storing arbitrary data on the Monero blockchain or really any blockchain for that matter because there's limitless ways that you can store and represent or send data. It's, it's already really, really difficult to prevent someone from misusing any old piece of software. And when we're talking about an open source decentralized piece of software like a blockchain, preventing that misuse becomes even harder. But on the bright side, there are not a lot of NFTs that are being minted on Monero right now. There's way less than what's going on with Bitcoin. And I don't think that this feature of like minting NFTs is ever gonna be that popular among Monero users. And like I said, there's talk about fixing this by just making it more expensive to use or just removing it altogether. This discussion was opened almost three years ago on Monero's GitHub called Consider Removing the TX Extra Field. And I suggest reading through this 
uh, along with the notes from the Monero Research Lab meeting that was held last Wednesday. So I'm gonna leave a link to these in the description of the video. But yeah, I just wanted to make a quick video about what's going on with ordinals and how it affects Monero and I guess how it's affecting the crypto space at large because I remember how disappointed I was when I learned that crypto punks and bored apes and all these images that people call NFTs and get so excited about aren't actually stored on the blockchain. The NFT is just a pointer to the image that's stored in the cloud somewhere. But since the actual image is stored on the chain with ordinals, that actually makes them a lot cooler than NFTs in my opinion. But since Monero has this focus on being a private, decentralized, fungible currency, there's no reason that it should support non-fungible tokens. This might be a good thing for I don't know, Wow Narrow or any other privacy meme coin to jump on because so far, ordinals have been helping Bitcoin's price. So it might be able to help theirs. But Monero Chan, she understands that becoming the lifeblood of a decentralized, unregulated market is a far more noble goal than just going to the moon. 